All right. Hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you are listening to me. I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is your second lecture at level one of Deliverance and Discipleship Institute. So as we begin, I want us to pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you for how far you have helped us in this journey. Thank you for the first lecture. Thank you for the wonders that the first lecture wrought in the life of your people. I accept that thanks in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that as we listen to the second teaching, the second lecture at level one of this institute, Lord, I pray that your word will illuminate our hearts and anointing for deliverance we enter into us and our spiritual life will grow in the name of jesus thank you father in jesus mighty name we pray amen god bless you so please if you hear the voice of the noises from beds from vehicles is because i am living on the mountain and the place is near bush and opposite an expressway so just Pay attention to the lecture, to my voice. Do you get that? God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's move forward. All right, lecture 1B. So I want us to talk about Jesus' view on deliverance. Jesus' view on deliverance. So what is the view of Jesus on deliverance? As believers, our Lord Jesus Christ is our perfect example. And is the image of God for us to follow. So... Before we venture into anything as Christians, as believers, we must examine what our model, that is Jesus Christ, teaches and does on it. Just as the scripture testifies about the early Christians and ministers, the early disciples, they don't do any, they didn't do anything that they didn't see Jesus doing. So when you open your Bible to the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 1, please let us read together. Bible said, the former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. So, everything Jesus taught on, everything Jesus did, they are what we must do. And he even said in John 14, 12, that we shall do greater than what he did. Hallelujah. Amen. So, what are our considerations in this lecture? what we are going to be talking about in this lecture. Number one, we are going to be talking about the Old Testament and deliverance. Relationship between deliverance and Old Testament. We know Old Testament, Old Testament is from the book of Genesis and it ends in the book of Malachi. So we shall be looking at what the Bible in the Old Testament talks about deliverance. So, and under that we shall be looking at deliverance cases in the Old Testament. God's verdict on anyone with demons and what is the promise of hope? What is the promise of hope? So, number two consideration under this lecture is Jesus, the first deliverance minister, and his instructions. So, we want to look at Jesus, the first deliverance minister, and his instruction. And number three, so we shall be looking at deliverance and Christians. So, what is the relationship between deliverance and Christians? Does Christians have anything to do with deliverance? So, and under this, we shall be explaining these five common words that are really understood by people. Christians, believers, a lot of ministers don't even understand these five common words. So, and those words are very, they are our key words in deliverance. And number one is possession, demonization, obsession, oppression, and depression. These five words are very important to you. You must understand them if you will get results in your deliverance ministration, whether to yourself, to your family, to friends, or to people outside. So, and the last one, we shall be considering the method Jesus used to conduct deliverance that made him get results when he was around with us here physically. All right, let's move forward. Now, Old Testament and deliverance. Old Testament and deliverance. Now, let's look at few deliverance cases in the Old Testament. Uh, how do we know deliverance case? Deliverance case is a case in the life of people 
or a problem of people that they have used medical on it. They have used different methods, uh, mechanical method, earthwise method, medical method, drugs, yet the case still remains. The problem still remains. When it happens like that, that is a different case, it means there is a demon involved. It means a demon is behind that problem, that, that uh, situation. So that person must be booked for deliverance. The person must go for deliverance or else every all the money spent on the person will be in vain. So when you look at the example of a woman, the woman with the issue of blood in the Bible in Luke 8 verse 43, the Bible says that woman had the issue of blood for how many years? For 12 years. Now, that woman had spent everything she had. She has spent everything she had in, in physicians' houses, in chemists' house, with uh with doctors, yet there was no solution until that day that she touched Jesus. She touched Jesus and the anointing, deliverance current from Jesus entered into her, and the spirit behind that infirmity left, and that was the end of the evil flow of blood from her body. So deliverance case is a case that persists even after you have used drugs and different methods that you know about yet the case still remains so a demon is behind it so let's look at the first example here number one Cain you know Cain Cain is the first son of Adam in the Bible in the book of Genesis now he was the first Cain he was the first uh, son rather so this man was demonized with the spirit of anger spirit of jealousy spirit of bitterness as a result of that he killed his brother Abel and destiny got wasted. Now, with every promises of God upon the lives of those two guys, uh, Cain and Abel, because of evil spirits in the life of Cain, he killed his brother. Abel was wasted, and him too was cursed by God. And that was why we used to say that God was the first person to lay a curse in the Bible. So he was cursed. It was cursed in the Bible. So when you read your Bible uh, in Genesis chapter 4, verses 2 8, you will come across that. So, and imagine if there was a deliverance minister or there is a provision for deliverance in those days. It is possible that Cain would have passed through deliverance and would have been delivered from those evil spirits, and Abel would have been alive, him too would have been alive. Both of them would have been fulfilling their destinies. But because there was no deliverance provision, no deliverance minister, both of them got destroyed and God had to allow Adam and Eve to have another son by the name Seth, through which God uh, continued to, uh, to multiply the head and to bring out somebody that will stand for him, that will stand for his integrity. So now let's move forward. Another man is Abraham. Abraham. Now, Abraham, when you look at this man, and I know you have heard about him, you have read about him, but do know that this man was demonized with the spirit of lies. He has spirit of lies. He has spirit of lies inside of him. Now he got to he got to Egypt. Him and his and his wife Sarah. They got to Egypt, and because his wife was beautiful, she, he began to think that the people in Egypt they were they are going to arrest or seize his wife from him, and they might even kill him. So he told his wife Sarah. He said, "Do you know what you're going to do?" He said, "Let us lie to them." Let us tell the lies. So when we tell their lies, they won't kill me in Egypt. So, and they, because they are truly, they arrested the wife. And he said, it's my sister. It's not my wife. So they didn't kill him. So what they did was that they gave him bread price. They gave him slaves, gave him cattle, gave him different, they gave him gold and silver. So, and they collected Sarah from him. So in the night, God appeared to the king of Egypt and said, if you don't return the wife of this man to him, you are a dead man. So, and in the morning, the king returned the woman to Abraham. But do you know what? Abraham did not return the bride price. He didn't return the bride price. And one of the bride price given to Abraham that day was Agar. So that Agar was the woman that Abraham later committed adultery with. And Edgar gave back to Ishmael. Now, this Ishmael is the father of Islamic nations that are disturbing the world today. So, look at what spirit of lies caused. Now, spirit of lies caused a whole generation. Spirit of lies caused two religions, Muslim and Christians. 
spirit of lies caused enmity. You see everything that is going around us by this Muslim society, Muslim religious people. Now, because Abraham had spirit of lies, imagine he had passed through deliverance and that spirit was casted out. He wouldn't have told lies and they would have prayed on the issue and the king wouldn't have even think of collecting his wife. But because there was this spirit in him, oh my, because there was this spirit in him. So, <laughs> He had to, he had to lie. He had to lie. And do you know that this spirit of lie did not even end in him? His son Isaac also inherited that same spirit of lies. So when you open your Bible to the book of Genesis chapter twelve verse thirteen, and you also read Genesis twenty six verse seven, you will see where Abraham manifested the spirit of lies, and where Isaac also manifested the spirit of lies. Let's move forward. All right, another person is Samson. Samson, you have heard about him, a powerful man, a great man, a man that had upon him the investment of heaven. But in spite of all of this, he had the spirit of pride, the spirit of immorality in him, and he was wasted with all this anointing upon him. When you open your Bible to the book of Judges chapter 16, verse 28 to 30, you will see what the Bible says about Samson there. That man was wasted because of the spirit of pride and immorality. So you can begin to check your life or people are, the lives of people around you and begin to dictate that there are some things that are not normal, that are happening because there are spirits involved. So it is better that you start casting out those spirits now, conducting deliverance to those people around you so that their destiny can be preserved. Now, another person is Reuben. Now, Reuben was the first son of Jacob, and he is a man that has a promising destiny, but he had spirit of immorality. Imagine, how can somebody be fornicating with his father's concubine? He was fornicating, was committing adultery, in fact, it was adultery. He was committing adultery with his father's concubine, and he continued that he didn't know that his father was aware. So, and when it came to a time when the father was to pro, uh, to pronounce blessings upon his children, instead of him to receive blessings, they didn't receive blessings. He was cursed, and he and his destiny got aborted. If not for Prophet Moses, that later intervened for his children in the book of Deuteronomy. This generation to generation would have not seen any blessing in their entirety. So that's what a demon can cause in the life of somebody. Now, another person is King Solomon. King Solomon. King Solomon was a son of David. He inherited spirit of immorality. <laughs> that one is hyper, hyper geometric level. Hyper geometric. <laughs> he inherited the spirit of immorality and he had he gathered 1,000 women. He gathered 1,000 women, wives and concubines. He was sleeping with them. And that led him to, to idolatry. And that idolatry made him to be a useless king. A useless king. He, was, he should have been the king that would be the richest till today, because of the promise of God. God invested wisdom, invested knowledge into him, but this spirit of immorality made the investment of God to be of no benefit. So, and that's why when you begin to read some some, some of his writings in the Bible, that in fact, you even sit down and think that, can this be a spirit of God speaking to me, or God teaching me a lesson from a man who had fallen because of spirit of immorality. Now, let's look at the cases related to demonic possession in the Old Testament. Now, in the Old Testament, there are people who had demons and they have merchandised they merchandise those demons. So, they were making money through those demons. People will go to them and people and they will they, they will conjure for them and and they will they will consult those demons for them. And those demons will give them reply concerning whatever they had as troubles. So, example of those people who had demons, who were working with demons those days, was the witch of Endor. In 1 Samuel chapter 28, verses 7 to 20, you will see a woman there. The Bible says that King Saul went to this woman to consult. And 
he said, please bring up Prophet Samuel for me. And because the woman had rights, he had access to many demons. So one of the demons came from the ground and that demon assumed the image of Prophet Samuel and even spoke with the voice of Prophet Samuel to King Saul. So that is one of the person that had demon possession. God ate these practices. He hates these practices, and there is a judgment God placed upon people like this. So there, another example is prophets, first prophet of Ahab. When you read your Bible to First Kings chapter twenty-two, verses twenty to twenty-two, you come across some prophets, about four hundred of them, uh, who used to prophesy to King Ahab. They used to deceive King Ahab, and there was another prophet in that land called Micaiah, the son of Himla. That one used to tell him the original voice of God. Now, God hates people. Because, uh, before you call somebody a false prophet, it means, the, it means the prophet is not using the spirit of God. The prophet is using a demon or some demons so to prophesy, to see vision. There are a lot of them in your surroundings today. Uh, there are a lot of them who are using juju, who, who are using demons to see visions, who are using demons to even, to even spot to even cause uh, what they call deliverance. But it's not actually deliverance. They are just using the spirit in them to make the spirit in the person to manifest. And they will say the demons has gone. It has not gone. The demons only manifested. Not that the demons... There is even between manifestation of demons and departure of demons. The Lord will give us understanding. Another person is Jezebel. When you open your Bible to the book of First Kings chapter 19, verses 1 and 2, so Jezebel was a wife of King Ahab in the Bible. She had a spirit of witchcraft. She was a witch in his days. God ate practices like this. He ate practices like this. So another, another one are the, the priests of Bezebub. Now when you open your Bible to the second Kings chapter 1, verses 1 to 6. The priests of Bazebub. These priests of Bazebub, they are the ones that King, uh, us know this king again now, sent his messengers to, to go and consult if he will die or not. And God sent Prophet Elijah to go and meet them on the way. That is, is it that there is no God in Israel? That you are sending people to go and inquire. Because of what you have done, you will die. <laughs> so, and he eventually died. So, priests of Bazebub. Now, all these people, all these people, what they are doing is totally against the will and the purpose of God for us. Now, you may want to ask, why is it that these people are collaborating with demons? Now, number one, the first reason is this. Demons cannot act alone on the head. Before demons can act, before demons can function on the head, they have to assume the body of a physical person who is, who, is, who, is, who is currently on the face of the earth. Because demons don't have physical body. They are spirit. They are spirit. So before they can act, they have to enter into the body of somebody and procure evil. Do you get that now? So they will enter into the body of somebody. And that is why you, that person that has demons in your environment, in your house, among your siblings, you must minister to them because if you don't minister to them and the spirit in that person gets more promotions, they can become trouble to you later in the future. You will just discover that there is a roadblock whenever you want to move forward. You won't know that it is because of a demon that you are allowed to reign in the life of somebody in your family. So everybody needs deliverance, as I told us in the first lecture. Let's move forward. Now, what is God's verdict on anyone with demons? God is not always happy with people with demons. People who work with demons. People who... People, people who use demons for merchandise. God is not always happy with them. So in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 10 to 12. And in Leviticus 20, verse 27. In Exodus 22, verse 18. The Bible says, anyone that you see that is working with demons, that is merchandising demons, uh, relating with demons, the Bible says they should be killed. Then they must be killed. So this shows how bad God hated demons. He doesn't want to see demons later with any of his creation. He doesn't want to see anybody that allowed demons to use him or her. God says, kill them. 
That was in the Old Testament. That was a God's verdict for them in the Old Testament. Hence, we as children of God must also have the same kind of hatred God has for de- demons. Let me share the story of a demonic young girl with you. Now, there is a young girl in Oyo State. This young girl, he, 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 returned home from, he returned home from school. And at night, it, she discovered that uh, she discovered that a particular girl that happened to be a schoolmate, primary three or four students, so happened to be a schoolmate, visited her at night, and she picked her hand and they and they passed through the wall and they went to the coven to hold a meeting. So when they got to the coven, they initiated her. So when they initiated her, so they began to make decisions together. And the, one of the decisions they made was that they wanted to kill a po- very popular man in New York State. Very popular politician in New York State. Because one of the daughters of that popular man was also part of them in the coven. So they said they want to kill And they gave the assignment to the man's daughter. They gave the assignment, go and kill your father. So when it was in the morning, they heard the news that the popular man had died. So this young girl that they just initiated was very afraid and she, she, and she narrated the story to her father. And she told her father, she said, when I was in school, said, one of my friends gave me a sweet and I took the sweet, I licked the sweet. So and at night she came to our room and she took me to the coven. So we went to the coven and we began to do meetings together and we decided on the death of a man and that man has died now. He said... I don't know who is next. I don't know who we are going to kill. And that's why I'm telling you now. If you are going to come into our coven so that we can protect you, so that we will not kill you. And when the man heard that, you know what the man did? The man packed the girl, the mother, and the other siblings. The man packed all of them and took them. He took them for deliverance. So when they got to deliverance, so they were ministered to all of them were ministered to. And the man of God, who happened to be my spiritual father, the man of God now asks, where is the school? And he followed them to the school. And when they got to the school, they told the school, the school authority that this is what is happening in your school. We don't know how many girls, how many boys have been initiated in this school. If you don't want evil to continue, all of these boys and girls must pass through the rivers. And that was why, how, that was how, they conducted deliverance to everybody and the school was sanitized and delivered to the glory of God. Imagine they didn't do that. Who know who will die next? So, and that's, 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 that's one of the secrets behind some untimely death, some sudden death. Some people, you just hear that they have died. You don't know what is happening. It's possible that one of the children in the family was the one responsible for the death. The Lord will give us understanding. In the name of Jesus Christ. So promise of hope. Even though God does not want to see evil spirit infiltrating the midst of people. And that was why he ordered that anyone with demons to be killed. At the same time, he doesn't like it when people die. So God began to strategize for the way to evacuate demons from people without killing the victims. So God began to strategize. How do we do it? How do we do it? And that's why when you read, there is a particular passage in the Bible, Bible says, and they found a lot of tears among the weeds, and they told the owner, said, how do we do this? Should we uproot the tears? said, the owner said, let us leave it like that. When it is time for harvest, we are going to separate them. Now, that was in the hood. Not now. So now when you discover a tears in the midst of your wheat, what, is, what you should do is to operate the, uproot the tears. Because if you don't uproot the tears now, the tears will later outgrow your wheat and destroy your harvest. Your harvest will not be destroyed in the name of Jesus. So, in Micah chapter 5, verses 12 and 13, when you read that place, you will discover that God said he will destroy witchcraft. He will destroy suicide. He will destroy uh, suicide. He will destroy every act of demons. So, He's not saying we destroy the rich. He's not saying we destroy the necromancers. What he's saying is that he wants to do that he will destroy witchcraft. That is the act of the act of practicing witch, witchcraft. That act 
is what he will destroy. And how does he destroy it? How will he destroy it? By evacuating those demons. Evacuating those demons from those people. So when he ev evacuates those when those demons are casted out, now the person remain become pure. The victim become pure and God can now use the person. So that's the hope that we have. But how can this be done? This provision is for the New Testament through Jesus Christ and the disciples that Jesus is going to anoint. Now Jesus the first deliverance minister. Jesus and his instructions. In the Old Testament, there are many people that God used powerfully in healings, miracles, and several kinds of signs and wonders. But there was no one that occupied the position of a deliverance minister. No one. Nobody. Nobody was a deliverance minister. Instead, they were killing people with demons. They were killing people with, instead of delivering them. They were killing them because... There was no provision. There was no provision for deliverance. So when Jesus came, when Jesus appeared in the first message he preached inside the temple, he encapsulated deliverance dimension. So you can open your Bible to the book of Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Bible says, Jesus said, we have read this scripture before in the first lecture. Now Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach deliverance to preach deliverance to the captives. So he has anointed me to preach deliverance. So deliverance is one of the work that Jesus came to do. And he happened to be the first deliverance minister. So Jesus' is deliverance assignment and instructions. So in Matthew chapter 4, verses 23 to 24, the Bible says Jesus entered into the synagogue to minister deliverance. So in the early, Jesus is laying a format to follow for all disciples. He entered into the synagogue. The synagogue there is the church. Enter the church. So there are people, there are Christians that need deliverance in the church. In your church, many people need deliverance. Uh, when last did you hear the testimony of we bought a new car in your church? When last did you hear the testimony of I just got a visa? I just got a scholarship. You won't hear all those testimonies because a lot of people in your church, in your assembly, needs deliverance. They need to deliver. When last did you hear that somebody got promotion in our place of work? They don't. They won't get that kind of testimony. Won't that kind of testimony because they need deliverance before they get those testimonies. So Matthew chapter ten, verse one. So Jesus sent out twelve disciples. 12 major disciples. He sent them out and he gave them their work prescriptions and one of them, one of the work prescriptions is deliverance. So deliverance was included in the work given to them and when they came back, they came back rejoicing because they casted out a lot of demons and Satan even wept because of that outreach. Now, in Luke chapter 10 verse 17, in this passage, the 70 disciples that were sent on house to house deliverance ministration came back with testimony. This was also due to the instruction of Jesus. They were sent out on house to house deliverance ministrations. Wherever you go, you see them, you preach to them, you cast out their demons. That was the assignment Jesus gave to them. And they did it with gladness. Not in their own name, but in the name of Jesus. Because Jesus gave them the instruction. And that same instruction he has given to you and I. To go. Preach Jesus to people, lead them to Christ, and cast out their demons. The Lord will give us understanding and grant us the grace to do so in the name of Jesus Christ. So, now, we are going to move to the next lecture. So, and in the next lecture, what we shall be teaching. I want you to pay a rapt attention. I want you to be serious with this school. We are at level one now. So, the next lecture... Is going to cover the following. So we shall look at deliverance and Christians. Deliverance and Christians. So we are, I'll be teaching you on what demonic possession is, what demonic oppression is, what demonic obsession is, what demonic depression is, and what demonization is. What those things, what they mean. What this, all these five terms in deliverance, what they mean and how they are applied. Eh? 
how you can apply them and when you see it happening in the life of anybody what are what the signs that you will see that you, that will make you to know that this one is passing through what is called demonic possession so in the next lecture i will be teaching on those five and also i will be teaching on the methods used by jesus to cast out devils now i want to give you your assignment i want to give you your assignment now please i believe you are jotting because you need to jot this lecture you need to have your deliverance notes that you can be referring to uh in the case of urgencies you can simply advise you can refer to your notes and you can use it to 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 to, to renew your mind you can also use it to 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 recap what you have learned so you use it to remind yourself of what you have learned so now the assignment i want to give to you is this the assignment i want to give to you is this uh i want you to look at the bible the four gospel books of the bible write out all the all the deliverances that happened whether through Jesus, whether through his disciples, the differences that happened in the first four books of the Bible, that is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, deliverances that happened, write them out. Send them to me on WhatsApp. God bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.